A year later, um, the rallying banner of the Reformation movement, the Augsburg Confession, uh, was presented uh, at the Diet of Augsburg, and I'm passing these around, you can each take one, at the Diet of Augsburg. I think there's, there's 20 of each, I think there's like 20 of you here, but you may have to, I just saw some folks come in, but I don't know where they went. So there may be one per, maybe one per household. And maybe if you have these, like in other words, you dad, maybe I'll take this. Because <laughs> uh, we may get just enough. Um, and uh, the Augsburg Confession, um, though it was written, uh, or, or at least we could say, and I have this on the second footnote of the, of the Chronological Theological Development handout, it was formally prepared by his colleague and right-hand man, Melanchthon. It was really based on writings and teachings of Luther. So that Luther himself and Melanchthon admitted that this is really Luther's confession, which, which he helped put together. But the Augsburg Confession, if there is such a thing as a, the birth of the Lutheran church, and we Lutherans actually don't like to talk that way. We, Luther himself and, and we as, as his inheritors see ourselves as a continuation of the one holy Christian and ancient church. But if there is such a moment as the birth of the Lutheran church, more so than the 95 Theses, which were really written by the pre-Lutheran Luther, it's really the Augsburg Confession of 1530. Um, it, it's, I mean, the 95 Theses is, is during Luther's transitional stage where he's moving to a clearer understanding of the gospel and its confession. The Augsburg Confession itself is, is really um, the document that serves, as, in a sense, as the, as the Magna Carta, the, 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 the birth document, the birth uh, document of, of the Lutheran Church. And it was presented at the Diet of Augsburg before the emperor on June 25th, 1530. And, and as a side note, I was traveling through Europe, through Europe in 1998, I think it was, or 1997, and uh, because I missed a train in northern Italy and had to spend the night at an open air train station and catch a train the next day, I caught the first one that came. Well, the first, I was supposed to go back up north into, into uh, Germany, but the next train came and I was cold and hungry. I had to just get on a train and I got on the next one. It took me all the way across Austria. And then I, so I got off at Vienna and noticed that the next train I could catch back was 15 minutes later. So I stepped out and said, oh, Vienna, very beautiful city. Got back on another train. And so I've been to Vienna. But uh, <laughs> took the other train, and because of that, I ended up getting to Augsburg. I took a walking tour of Augsburg, I got this, and I'm walking around, and I, I, you know, reading what it says, and it says, now, now you're standing on the spot where the Augsburg Confession was presented on June 25th, 1530. And I looked at my clock, which had the date on it, and it was June 25th, 1997, so it worked out well. Otherwise, I would have been there a day early for the anniversary. But, okay. and, but, but I was the only one there. I, was, I said, where, where's the van? Where's the crowd? <laughs> uh, they, they weren't anywhere to be found. Um, so that was, again, June 25th, of 1530. Um, and the reason for this Diet of Augsburg was that the emperor wanted a united front against the advancing Turks. So as has been the case throughout history, politics and religion mixed whether they should or not. Um, the Augsburg Confession forms, along with the small and large catechism, uh, some of the key documents of the, of the Book of Concord. This is the smallest edition you'll ever see of the Book of Concord. This is really neat, at least we Lutherans think it's neat. And carry this around as a small dagger. This is normally a much larger work, but this is a pocket-sized edition of the Book of Concord of 1580, which collected all of the Lutheran, if you will, Reformation writings uh, from the 16th century, including the small and large catechism and the Augsburg Confession. If you're interested, you can also check this out online, bookofconcord.org, and you can read historical stuff uh, about it there as well. Um, and, and then in 1546, he died. I mean, a lot of stuff between them, as I said, <laughs> between the Augsburg Confession and his death, as I said, a brief overview of some of the main points. Uh, my, my father wrote out Luther's name here and assigned uh, a letter to, uh, or, 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 or a, a descriptive uh, phrase or a word to each letter in, in Luther's last name so that he was a liberator. Uh, his book on Christian liberty in 1520 is a, a really kind of marks, um, I would say, a key text in terms of, of Luther's break with traditional medieval theology as, as and, and now something something new and yet as he would claim and we would claim something old something you know a scripture a return to the scriptural teaching of, of the gospel and uh, that was written in 1520 um, and in there he says he has this famous phrase that's on your handout a christian is a perfectly free lord of all subject to none a christian is a perfectly dutiful servant of all subject to all so in a way, Lutheranism 
if you think of this as yet another one of the turning points towards towards what we call Lutheranism today, Lutheranism begins right from right from the start with with paradox, and Lutheranism, Lutheranism still today thrives on paradox, uh, and we're going to talk about that a little bit later. That we are at one time uh, the same and one time saint and sinner, uh, God's demands, God's gifts, what we call law and gospel, two different realms that are distinct and different but complementary. Lutheranism has all these pairs of paradox. And, and it right from the beginning. Um, he was an urger. We talked about the, the, the well, we talked, I was gonna say, we talked about the Diet of Worms, we, and we had our, 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 as Pastor Denning said, our Diet of Worms time with the spaghetti before the meal. Um, and uh, I, was, I, I was also there at the same trip there in 1997, came to Worms, and big, um, a big, uh, I don't know what the word I'm looking for here is, but a big display of, uh, big monument, a large monument of several different statues of, of Reformers, uh, some of you whom you'll hear about in, in the coming weeks, and with Luther standing there as the largest in, in the center of downtown Warriors. Very, very impressive. Right? 